Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our morning inspiration, Friday, February 23, 2024. I pray that you are all in a good spirit, and I pray that you are well and your family is doing well. And I hope that as you go through today, that the Holy Spirit will be your guide. And may you allow Him to lead you as you continue to seek His face. Our reading today comes to us from Matthew chapter 16. We will read verse 24 to 28. It says, Then Jesus said unto his disciples, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it, and whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. For what is a man profited if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? For the Son of Man shall come in the glory of his Father with his angels, and then he shall reward every man according to his works. 28 and last. Verily I say unto you, there will be some standing here which shall not taste of death till they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. And I say, Amen. We give God thanks again this morning for his holy word and I pray that you will be encouraged and I pray that you will be blessed. Now, a true disciple of Christ is one that follow him in duty. Right? He will follow him to glory. So he will go all the way. And he will walk with Christ as he is led by the Spirit. And he will tread softly wherever he goes. The Bible said that let him take up his cross and follow me. So self-denial is important. And this is a lesson that a lot of us struggle with. We are not willing to lay self aside. And even if we say that we will, when it comes to the test for us to actually do so, we fail miserably. But self-denial cannot come of our own willpower. This is something that the Holy Spirit has to help us with. Because the carnal is constantly warring against the spiritual. And so unless we surrender our will to God, there's no way he can help us. So as the saying goes, we need to help God help us. What do I mean by that? We need to let down our guard so that he is able to come in and to reach us. If we have this wall up between ourselves and him, how is he going to get to us to pull away all that? Is tying us and tangling us and keeping that separation between us and him. We got to let go. We can't be pulling left and pulling right. We need to pick one side. And so we must take up our cross, the Bible says, and follow him. Wherever he's, he's going, that's where we go. You remember the disciples back then? They followed Jesus every single way that he was going and so the world must be able to identify us as his disciples christ's disciples because what of our attitude because of the fact that we are emulating him who is christ amen the bible also says whosoever shall save his life will lose it and who shall lose his life for his sake will 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 have life no, the question is, how far are you and I willing to go for Christ? Are we willing to give up our own life for his cause? Are we rather much save our own skin? That's something to think about. And maybe we might not be put to that test where, you know, it's a life and death situation. But the fact of the matter is that we are put to that test every single day in different ways let me paint a picture when your boss tell you to come in to work on saturday and you decide that you are going to go into work even though you know that you're not supposed to work on the sabbath you're gonna go into work because what you don't want your boss to fire you and so you sacrifice your relationship with god 
or you put God aside just so that you can keep your job. That's another way you can look at it where the Bible says that you're saving your own skin or you're saving your own life. So it might not always be in the literal sense where your life is at stake. Every decision that you make for or against Christ, that's exactly what we are doing. And so when we are put to the test for real in the life and that situation, it becomes easier to make that choice because we have, we have already been preparing ourselves by the little choices that we make. Telling God that, look here, this is how much you mean to me and this is how far I am willing to go. And so, let us understand that what we do on a daily basis is preparation as we walk with Christ daily. It's either we will get closer to Him or we will get further away from Him. We are making a choice for our last stand. And so, if, and so if we choose to lose our life, whatever form that may take, then the Lord will take care of business for us. So, if your boss is going to fire you, well, the Lord will provide a second job. And if the Lord desire, He can work it out so your boss can fire you. Think about that. Remember, God says that when you take care of His business, He will take care of your business. And if you stand up for Him, He will stand up for you. Isn't that what He said? And so let us understand that the God that we serve care about us. So we are not following him in vain. We follow him because we love him. And so because we love him, we will experience times of difficulties where we have to carry the cross. There, there are moments when we will have to carry the cross. Sometimes we will fall down and the cross will drop on our back. Sometimes the, the, the splinters on the cross will scrape in our flesh. Sometimes we get thirsty from carrying that cross on our back. But let us remember that the same God who took the cross to Calvary for you and for me will help us to carry our own cross. So even though he says take up your cross and follow him, he's not leaving the burden on you alone. Isn't that amazing? We serve an awesome God and let us trust in his ability to take care of us. But we have to prove our unwavering service to him. We have to pledge our allegiance to him as he guide us in the path of righteousness. Keep our eyes on the prize because if we stand against God, then we will have no one to stand up for us in the judgment. And that is very serious and something that we cannot afford to mess around with. Okay? And don't be fooled. God will give us what we work for in a manner of speaking. We will receive the reward that we earn. So if we live a faithful life, if we follow the principle and the precepts and we are covered under His righteousness, when he comes, he will say, well done, good and faithful servant. And our reward will be heaven. If we fail to do any of those things, if we live an unfaithful life and we are not covered under his righteousness, then naturally you know where we're going to go. We will be destroyed. Our reward will be hell and destruction. And I know none of us want that. So let us learn to surrender. We always sing this song, I surrender all. But sometimes the truth is that we sing that song in vain because we hold on so tight to whatever it is that we need to let go of. And even though we are singing the song, I surrender all, I surrender all to Jesus, He can't get us to let go. So, yes, we surrender, but we only surrender halfway or quarter way. And if you don't surrender in totality, you didn't surrender any at all. So the halfway and the quarter don't count as anything. It's all or nothing. Okay? And then it goes on to tell us that not everyone 
will experience death. So, you remember what it said in verse 25 about whosoever will save his life will what lose it here it comes on in verse 28 and say again that not everyone will see death so even when you are put in a life and death situation you don't must die because god can decide to preserve you until he's coming or he can say well i'm gonna allow you to rest so whatever suits him that's what he will do but the important thing is that we must make the right choice to stand for him and not the wrong one to stand against him so not everyone will die some of us yes we will see that the lord will put us to rest to save our own soul because if god should allow some of us to live until he's coming then we might not make it sometimes we become so undecisive we become so weary we become so distracted and so for our own good some of us will see that but then there are those that will not see that till they see the son of man coming in his kingdom so as we consider the word of god this morning may we be encouraged and may we be blessed and don't look at serving god as a burden because the moment you start to think of it like that that's exactly what it's going to be a burden just like a lot of folks look at the sabbath as a burden a list of do's and don'ts and so they start to keep the sabbath in a very legalistic manner and by doing that you're not actually keeping the sabbath in the same way if we look at christianity and our relationship with god as a burden and you know oh we have to be straight and narrow and all of those things yes the bible said that we must be perfect we can't be perfect of our own and so only god can make us perfect and so that is why we need to surrender and when we surrender to him then he will make us perfect okay so trust in his ability to keep you and may you depend on him because he wants to save you he loves you he loves all of us he didn't come to die on a cross to go back to heaven empty-handed he came to save this world and his intention is that the world will be saved as much as that might not be the case that is goal and his desire so stay on the side of jesus you won't regret it trust me because with him all things are possible and there is life eternal amen god bless you and have a wonderful rest of the day amen